Hi everybody, welcome back for another video. Happy Thanksgiving Eve for my fellow Americans out here. Who's ready to get their turkey stuffed? <laughs> Insert that into any context you see fit. <laughs> Okay, so we have a whole scorpion cake's worth of discussion to get here today. We are going to be starting off today's episode with Community Corner, and then we will be hopping on into Instagram Stories by Eugenia. And then we're going to move on to some live stream clips that we missed in the last video that I made. My webcam was acting real weird. I don't know what it is, but sometimes when I'll be filming, I'll be talking, and then it'll freeze, like, and then I'll have to go in, change it. It's a whole process. I know, I know. Can you believe it? <laughs> so we're going to be taking a look at some live stream clips that we did not get to from the other day. That was Sundays? Sundays, yes. When she and Jeffrey were hanging out in that one room with uh, the other guy. Which, by the way, I found out was Hair by Jay. <laughs> Remember the one that uh, was going to attack Trisha Paytas or whatever all those years ago? Remember when Trisha came on here and she was saying how toxic Jeffrey is and how she went to go eat a nacho on their trip to Las Vegas and he slapped it out of her hand and said, no, don't eat that. And they charged Trisha like $5,000 for a custom wig. That guy, Hair by Jay. <laughs> <laughs> that was who they were with the other day. So, okay, that was the third person in the room. So we're going to be taking a look at some of those clips that we did not get to when my webcam went all um, funky on us. And in addition to that, we're going to be taking a look at something that the internet is um, kind of uh, all chit-chatting about lately. Apparently, when there was... That live stream, you know, that I described as the rogue live stream that I was not able to get my own footage of. Apparently, okay, I do not know how to do this, but apparently on some phones, when you are filming yourself or you are filming other people, there is a way in which your phone can be enabled so that it comes across as you looking like a different person when you are being filmed live. I hope I did a good job in explaining that. But so basically, like if I were to be filming myself right now, I don't have any filters on. Like I didn't change the brightness. I didn't change the saturation. I didn't do anything to make my face look skinnier or my jaw more defined. I did not do anything like the person that you were seeing in the webcam right now. Like this is what I look like in person. But there are ways that you can put filters on when you're live streaming that like makes your skin look more clear or it makes you look thinner or it makes you look, I, I don't know, better, I guess. Like, you know, why does anybody use a filter? So apparently on this Sunday live stream that they were doing, Eugenia was using a filter that made her skin look um, different. You know, that that's the purpose of a filter, right? Um, it made her skin look different, um, slash better, slash the way that she wanted it to look. So there was a moment during this live stream that is now being described as a filter fail in which Eugenia's filter that she was using to make herself come across on screen as a certain way, it slipped or turned off for a split second, and you could see the raw footage of who we were looking at, that that the person, you know, without the filter. So we're going to be taking a look at that, and then, um, I don't know, do y'all, I know that I know that I said I was going to do it last episode, but I didn't do it, um, the, the, the $700 swag bag review, I know that some of you were curious about that and everything, you know, you know, the, the, the problem with that is I was watching the, one of you emailed me a TikTok link of someone that went to that thing, which, by the way, Brianna, Brianna, I thought that you were going to email me, actually, I don't know, were you going to email me? Maybe I shouldn't point my finger just yet. Maybe maybe I shouldn't point my crooked, bony witch finger just yet. Brianna, I thought that you were going to email me your $700 swag thing. 
I guess not. But apparently, the one video that I did find of someone that went to the Casper, Wyoming meet and greet and was able to get in there and get the $700 swag bag, they uploaded a part two. It's like they showed us everything that they bought at the store, and then they're like, okay, you guys, and this is just what I bought on my own. I did have, I haven't even done the review of the swag bag yet, so I'm going to put up part two in a second. And then she put up part two with some, like, weird music in the background and some like you know how sometimes they'll remix songs and they'll make the artists sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks it's it's like that like I don't like that so there's I don't even know if there's a point in taking a look at the video that we were going to originally take a look at just because she doesn't really go through the swag bag one by one and say like oh this is this this is this this is. so I mean it, it's just a video of someone holding up cosmetics in the air with annoying music playing in the background i mean we can maybe take a look at it at the at the end maybe i don't know maybe i'll flip a coin here <laughs> but something tells me that y'all won't be too heartbroken if we skip the 700 dollars swag bag review um from what i read and this is gonna be the last thing i say about it from what i read it, it was as advertised it was 700 dollars worth of cosmetics now whether those cosmetics were on the brink of expiring or they were undersold uh pallets that are were rotting in a warehouse somewhere we will never know but yes um apparently it was delivered as advertised Okay, y'all, so we are going to move on into Community Corner. Y'all had a lot to say from the Watering the Plants live stream. Um, first off, I wanted to take a look at something that someone said who was actually in the live stream. You know, when I get the footage from these or I, you know, take a look at these footage from another clip channel that has uploaded it for us, usually the comments and, you know, all the points and all of the emojis and all of the everything, it's not present on the screen. Like, if you were to watch what we are watching on the screen right now on TikTok, there would be a whole lot of coins and numbers and all this other shit po popping up all over the screen. I mean, it would be completely cluttered with crap all over the screen. But when I film it and when some of the clip channels upload their footage, it's like clean, like what we're looking at right now, it's just, you know, footage of a person. <laughs> there's no numbers. There's no everything. I mean, I know like this little heart emoji thing pops up all the time. But I, I mean, this is way more simple than if you were watching this on a TikTok live stream. But anyway, the point is one of you was in that rogue live stream of Eugenia's this past Sunday. And you said that. Normally, when you go to a Eugenia Cooney live stream or you go to a Jeffree Star live stream, overwhelmingly, the comments in it are negative. They are problematic. They are sometimes toxic. Um, a lot of derogatory things are said. A lot of obscenities are being blared in the chat. And it's kind of like something that you come to get used to. It's like, okay, you're clicking on a Eugenia Cooney live stream. Let the chaos begin. You like by, by agreeing to watch Eugenia Cooney on a TikTok live stream, you are making a conscious decision to enter the arena of TikTok and anything that may go on. So you're kind of used to seeing a lot of problematic things being said in the chat. But in this live stream in particular, one person mentioned that the comments were especially bad. Like, if we're normally at a six, this comment section was a nine in terms of severity. So the person that mentioned this said, you know, I, I think that this is kind of what they want at this point. If we can amp it up, if we can take it to the next level, we're going to continue to let it happen. Because you know what? There are some times on here when Eugenia comes on live stream and she says, oh, or Jeffrey comes on live stream or any of them come on live stream. The whole posse comes on. And they say, you know what? The chat's not looking too good right now. I'm not really digging what's going on in the chat, what's being said. Let's turn it on subscriber only mode. Let's turn it on slow mode. Let's have uh, some moderators clean up the chat a little bit. If you notice people are in here and they're saying, really terrible things, go ahead and time them out, go ahead and ban them. But even though the comment section from this live stream was especially bad, you know, some described as the worst you have ever seen it, there were no moderators put into play. 
There was no slowing of the chat. There was no subscriber only mode. There was no nothing. It was basically the wild, wild west. If you wanted to go in there and say anything, you could, and Eugenia wasn't really going to do anything about it. Which, I mean, I do think that there is some sort of responsibility that a content creator should assume when hosting a live event like that. I do think that it is in someone's best interest to have a little bit of precaution put into place so that things don't get too wild and people just can't say whatever they're thinking, regardless of whether or not it's breaking the TOS or it's coming off as very triggering or offensive to other people. But it's kind of to the point where people are asking, is, is this what they want? Is, is this what we're going for here? Is, is this the desired outcome? Because if you really cared to have a... I don't even know if a civil chat is is possible in this scenario, but if you're trying to have a chat that isn't just the wild, wild west, you would be having these moderators put into place. You would be taking these precautions. You would be preparing to not fail, in a sense. But the fact that she has no moderators, or if she does, she only has like one or two, um, she doesn't slow the chat. She doesn't really do anything to put an end to this. It's kind of like, well... Is this what you want then? Is, is this what you want? People to come in and do all this and say all this? And and then on top of that, that, that thought kind of led into, well, does Jeffrey want that too? Because Jeffrey has been described in years past as someone who is a drama magnet. Wherever he goes, there's drama. You know, kind of like, I don't go looking for trouble. Trouble finds me. <laughs> but in this cha in this case, I don't know. Does that saying even work for him? Does he go out and look for the trouble? I mean, people are saying by befriending Eugenia Cooney and making a lot of the decisions that Jeffrey has made in the past, he is someone that seeks out trouble actively. <laughs> so drama magnet, I don't know. Are these just two drama magnets coming together? Are these, are these two black holes coming together to form a super massive black hole to swallow up galaxies in the TikTok verse? <laughs> Quite literally, <laughs> $15 galaxies for the black <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you don't get too many astronomy jokes on here. You don't. You don't. That was a good one. That was a good pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> so yeah, drama magnets. And this is kind of what they have in common, right? People are typically friends with people that they have things in common with. So if, hey, you're a problematic TikToker, I'm a problematic TikToker, we together can be problematic TikTokers. He, she, me, wombo, kind of like that. It's like, well, we have this in common. We both have similar interests. We're both trying to make money. We're both trying to be seen more. We both have narcissistic tendencies. Maybe it would be in our best interest for us to team up. So, I, I mean, hey, like, what, what's better than a bunch of people coming together to take a look at one problematic social media influencer? A bunch of people coming together to take a look at two problematic social media influencers, you know? <laughs> so he knows that Eugenia adores him. He knows that Eugenia would do absolutely anything for him. So maybe when Jeffrey's realizing, hey, you know, this girl, she's pretty popular. Got a lot of viewers. Got a lot of people taking a look at her. Um, maybe now that I have her uh, wrapped around my finger... I can sort of tailor this and orchestrate it to fit my needs. Yes, she comes off as a teacup Yorkie nipping at my heels often enough, but there is something to be said about what she's able to do for Jeffree Star Cosmetics. What having her around, what making these PR videos and having her review all this stuff and having her come to these events in LA and Wyoming, that does something for my business. So while she may be extremely irritating to me in times, it's for the greater good and it's for the best interest in my business to sell more Scorpio stuff. And I mean, honestly, when you really think about it, it worked. It worked. Think about all the people that follow Eugenia. Think about all the people that see her. Um, you know, she's a very controversial internet celebrity right now. And if you know anything about Eugenia over the past couple months, you have more than likely seen something along the lines of Jeffree Star Cosmetics. So if you're seeing it advertised online, I mean, it's like, hey, 
It's good makeup. Oh, that looks good. You know what? I could use some new primer. I could use some new eyeshadow. Uh, uh. So it's getting out there to more people. And this has kind of always been Jeffrey's thing. Any attention is good attention. Well, you know, I don't need to be someone that's, you know, radiating positive vibes, even though they do tend to claim that they radiate positive vibes, um, toxic positivity, but we've covered that extensively. Any attention is good attention. And he knows that people flock to drama, and when people flock to drama... What better to do with all of the people standing in the room waiting for something dramatic to happen on screen than him go, hey, everybody, new palettes. Go ahead. $63 plus shipping right in time for the holidays. So, all right. Now, let's move on to watering the plants. Now, I will not be watering any plants. You all are free to water your own plants as you see fit. But in terms of Eugenia watering the plants or having her plants watered for her, y'all had a lot to say. Um, so first of all, let's start this on... There's going to be two different views of this. I did not see a lot of people on the fence regarding the whole watering the plants topic of discussion. It was more so, okay, yeah. Actually, yes, uh, you know, I I'm someone that has gone through some shit in the past. I'm someone that has really had issues in life and watering the plants uh, helped me cope. Watering the plants helped me get through this. It, it, it made me more, you know, able to get past my uh, bad habits and everything. So some of you kind of related to this and said, yeah, thumbs up. I, I agree with this. But there was another portion of the audience that was saying absolutely not. Uh, like kind of like the eye, eye widening open moment. You kind of taking a look at Eugenia, kind of taking a look at watering the plants and what that can do to a person, and thinking to yourself, "Oh God, this is an accident waiting to happen." So let I don't know. Let's start. Let's start with the first group of people that are saying yes, yes. So there was something that was brought up in the chat in terms of conceptualizing an experimental friendship with Jeffrey and Eugenia. Now, what I mean by that is if Eugenia and Jeffrey were not friends, I, I know, shocker, oh my gosh, she just turned to a puddle of ash somewhere. <laughs> if they were not friends, what would Eugenia be doing otherwise? She'd be sitting in that pink room on that pink couch doing live streams, going about the same exact lifestyle that she has been doing for all of the years that she's been on social media. Some of you are saying, well, even though these TikTok people and Jeffrey and Jeffrey's employees and everyone Jeffrey's associated with are probably not her ideal friends or people that she should be ideally surrounded by, at the very least, hey, listen, she's getting out there. She's doing something. She's being, she she has a friend. I mean, even though that friend might be Lucifer to some people, but hey, Lucifer's a friend nonetheless. Um, at least she's getting out. She's being around people. She's doing things. She's not just sitting in her room at her mom's house, living the same exact lifestyle that people are describing as a downward spiral into oblivion. I think you might have a point. I think you might have a point. Um, it, it's kind of like, well, if we are looking at Eugenia's life in a very narrow sense of this is what she does, this is what she's always done, this is what she's going to continue to do for years to come until dot, dot, dot. Now this new variable comes to play in her life. Jeffrey, friends, events, dinners, uh, meet and greets. None of this would happen otherwise. If Eugenia was not standing there with, with this group of people right now. So it, it's kind of like a um, sort of like a shot in the dark. It's like, well, I, I mean... Yeah, this may not be what's best for her, but hey, listen, if it leads to 1% 
of good being applied to Eugenia's life. That is 1% of guaranteed goodness that she is receiving in her life than she would otherwise get from sitting on the pink couch in Deb's house. So I sort of see your point. I see your point because I think that Eugenia's life is very stagnant in a sense. And by being friends with Jeffrey, it is sort of flaring things up a little bit and sort of throwing life and Eugenia's well-being up in the air and kind of saying, well, I mean, you know, hey, hey like, let's uh, let's gamble with this a little bit. Let's 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 play the lottery. Let's uh, let's get her out there. Let's bring her to all these events. Let's do all this. Like, maybe this will do something, you know? So it's like, for example, if she would have never watered the plants with Jeffrey, who knows if that's beneficial? It's like, well, if it is beneficial, then Jeffrey, okay, good, good job. But I mean, you know, if it's not, it's like, well, oh, okay. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, that was, that was destructive. That was not something. So it, it's kind of like, um, yeah, g- gambling. That's the best way that I can describe it. So I I do. I know a lot of you kind of subscribe to the belief that we are on a one track motion here, that the inevitable is likely to come sooner than later. And um, if she doesn't get out of that pink room, if she doesn't start doing something, if she doesn't start changing her habits, it is going to lead down that track that so many of you have predicted. So, The whole concept of this experimental friendship and maybe some good coming of it is definitely a topic that we will be continuing to discuss on this channel. I think that we can all sort of agree that Jeffrey is probably not the best person that Eugenia is going to be surrounded by. But hey, but you know what? On the other term, do we as an audience have the right to say this isn't what she needs that's not ideally who should be who she should be friends with i don't like this this isn't what because i i mean what the, the the alternative is not going to be what we want and what should be implemented it's going to be sitting in the pink room on the pink couch that's what the alternative is going to be The alternative is not going to be, you know, what Jacqueline tried to put into motion. The alternative to be is just going to be, I don't know, rotting on that pink couch. So it's like, do do we have a right to sit here and say, I don't want, I don't want her doing this. I don't want her friends. Like, this is not what she needs, blah, blah, blah. Cause like the alternative. Okay. Well, if you don't want that, listen, the, the alternative is this. So are you okay with this or are you kind of, you know, okay with leaving this up to chance? Very interesting topic to be bringing up. Okay, so um, there was some discussion in the chat about watering the plants and the concept of that um, to begin with. I probably should have moved this point to the top because I have been talking about it so much recently (laughs) in like the past 10 minutes. But some people were saying, well, if it's watering the plants that's okay. You know, it kind of fell into that one group of people in the comments that were saying, yes, I agree with this. This is something that she could benefit from. Absolutely. But some other people were saying, well, I'm confused. Like, is watering the plants, um, is is that an umbrella term for things like the snowflake emoji? Remember? You know, large inhale. Oh, allergies this time of year. They're absolutely insane. So, I, as a whole, largely, I mean, pretty much, I can say like with, with 100% certainty, snowflake emoji, absolute no-no. But there was there was a tear in the discussion in terms of watering the plants and what that might do for someone like Eugenia. And this topic of discussion kind of reminded me about the whole private jet thing. By Jeffrey having her around, watering the plants doing whatever it is that they do, wherever it is they do it, he's taking a chance. He's assuming responsibility. He's essentially being liable. Because the group of people in the comments saying she shouldn't be doing this, no plants should be, in her, you know, in her condition, no plants should be watered. It's, it's too big of a risk. It's too, so say, say that that group of people was right, were right in this scenario. And Jeffrey is introducing it, providing it, and then something happens. Kind of the same thing about the jet. 
if Eugenia flies on Jeffrey's jet and in that one hour, that one hour and 20 minutes that they're up in the air, something happens, that happened on Jeffrey's jet. He's he's responsible. And, you know, when you're someone like Jeffrey Star in Jeffrey's position and you're a leader, you assume a lot of responsibility through many aspects of life. So, I mean... Having Eugenia around in and of itself is sort of a liability. That's kind of why we were saying the whole thing of, well, then this is probably why Deb um, wants to be the one to make decisions. It's like, well, if anything happens, I know what's best. I know what should be done. I'm prepared for this mentally. I'm prepared to make decisions. I'm Jeffrey's not. Jeffrey's not. So... Jeffrey is sort of playing with fire in a sense. He's definitely taking a risk by having Eugenia around at all of these things and doing things such as watering the plants. Because, and you know what? I don't mean to be speculative and I don't mean to be suggestive, but there is something that is being on displayed on the screen that we know about. And then when they turn off these live streams, which isn't very frequently, but in you know in the 10 minutes that they aren't all live streaming things are said and things are done that we the audience don't get to know about it's you know kind of the whole behind the scenes concept so if what we know about Eugenia and Jeffrey's friendship is already a little bit concerning i'm just saying there's a whole ocean out there of possibilities of things that we don't know about so uh, it's just always something to keep in mind. It's always something to keep in mind just because who knows? Who knows what is said and who knows what is um, done behind the scenes when people aren't looking. You know, that's that's that whole thing about integrity. It's but you know, what, what you're doing when no one's watching you. Hmm. I don't know. Do we think Jeffrey has integrity? But um, so wanted to move on to something more along the lines of Deb. What do we think that Deb's reaction is to this? Because, oh, n you cannot tell me that Deb's butt is not bored in a hotel room somewhere watching all of this go down. I bet you Deb is watching every drama video, every reaction video, every live stream, every... If, if a galaxy is received by Eugenia or Jeffrey, she knows about it. So... What do we think that Deb's reaction to this whole watering the plants thing is? Because, you know, for the longest time, Eugenia is just her baby. Someone she's always taken care of. Well, taken care of. And, you know, there's there's a different discussion to be had about that. But Eugenia's her baby. Eugenia is someone that um, she's always taken care of. So now to be seeing her thrown into this situation where she's making her own decisions or other people are making decisions for her. What do we think that Deb's reaction is to this? It's like, well, you know, you had me fly you out here. You had me fly you out here two weeks later to LA. You're out with your friends. You're doing all this stuff. And now you're watering the plants. It's kind of like, you know, like like 16-year-old in high school kind of vibes. It's like, you know, once you started hanging out with those people, you changed. You started doing all the stuff that they're doing. I don't, I, so I mean, like, this is something that a parent would typically view in a, like a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old. You know, like, they go into ninth grade and they start making new friends in high school and they start picking up bad habits. And then the parent intervenes and says, oh, I don't like all this. But, but I mean, she's 29, but, you know, I can imagine that Deb is still having a lot of those same feelings that, say, a parent who is witnessing their 14-year-old turn into a 15-year-old in ninth grade and start hanging out with a bunch of people who don't make the best decisions. So, I, I don't know. Do we think that Deb is someone that is going to intervene? Is she someone that even has the grounds to intervene? Does Deb hold the keys? Does Deb make the decisions? Are there some decisions that Deb is allowed to make that Eugenia has to succumb to? Or is Eugenia solely making the decisions around here? Because one of you did bring up a very interesting point, and I thought that the best way to predict someone's future decision is to look at how they have made decisions in the past. Um, Eugenia doesn't want to do public school. Okay, well, let's take her out of public school. You can now do cyber school. 
Eugenia wants to fly to Wyoming to stay with her friend that she met on TikTok for a week. Okay, I will accompany her. I will get a hotel at my own expense. Let's go. Two weeks later, Eugenia wants to go see the same friend out in L.A., and then go to Wyoming again. Okay, I will accompany her. I will do the... So there are instances in Eugenia's life, I know that that was only a short list of examples, that we have seen what Eugenia wants, Eugenia gets. And I know that there is a lot of mixed opinions and discourse on Deb and Eugenia's relationship. Some people are under the impression that Deb is the one holding the keys. Deb is the one making all the decisions. And she, you know, only allows Eugenia's leash to go so far. But in certain scenarios, she does extend the leash a little bit. And then there are a group of other people that are saying that Eugenia holds the keys. Eugenia makes the decisions. Eugenia holds something over Deb's head. And when someone typed this out in the comments, it really just, I don't know. It, it kind of made me shudder just because the concept of it is so twisted. Um, one of you mentioned in the comments regarding like what I've been talking to just now of Eugenia holding the keys and why she is allowed to hold the keys, why she has held the keys for so many years like this, and why she has had Deb basically, you know, drive her around, house her, do whatever it is that she wanted to do. She holds something over Deb's head. And what what is what is the ultimate thing that you, that a child could do to get a parent to get them to do what they want? Um, they hold their well-being over their parent's head. Hey, listen. If you don't take me out of public school, if you don't do this, for, if you don't drive me all, if you don't, if you don't do every like everything that I want you to do for me, um. Here's the path that I'm going to go down. So the responsibility now is on your shoulders. And if you don't do what I want you to do, this is what's going to happen to your baby. Which is even like a concept that one of you introduced that just seemed very dark to me. But I do think for the purpose of the conversation that we're having, Sometimes when you need to understand things, you need to look at things and thought processes and speculations of things that aren't so pretty and are otherwise things that people would rather want to swipe under the rug and not talk about or think about. The concept of Eugenia potentially holding her well-being over her mother's head in order to continue the way in which she wants to do because where we are right now baseline lifestyle it's functional um eugenia is able to work she's able to travel she's able to live life um baseline she's but what if a variable were to change and um Deb were to stop giving in. Deb were to stop want to, uh, giving Eugenia everything that she wanted to or enabling Eugenia or um, making things possible, whereas if Eugenia was on her own, they would not be possible. Um, it's a very interesting concept. Deb continues to be the most... thought-provoking character in Eugenia's life, in my opinion. I think that you can, we, we can learn a lot from Deb and why Eugenia has lived the life that she has lived and why she continues to live it to this day. Because it's undeniable that in this situation, Eugenia would not be able to perpetuate the lifestyle that she is continuing to do without the assistance of someone. So Deb plays a large role in the facilitation and the continuance of Eugenia's life and everything that Eugenia wants. 
So I thought that that was a very, um, I almost, I almost didn't even talk about this concept just because it was very dark, very dark and twisted. And, um, but I mean, if, if the condition persists in the way that it will do anything to get what it wants to continue to last, to thrive, um, decisions, no matter how dark or twisted they are, will be made. So I, I don't know. I don't know if this is just a, a moment in time where this is like where we're taking an example of sort of learning about the very cruel nature of the condition and um, an instance in which we are discovering why Eugenia is Eugenia or why Deb makes the decisions that she does. Oh, oh boy. Okay, so moving on from all of that, which I mean, you guys are let you guys are to let me know in the comments about that. I understand that that's going to come across as like a very controversial point in Community Corner, but I just feel like it was necessary to talk about. Um, but anyway, moving on from that, baby in the cold. <laughs> what a pivot, right? Baby in the cold. Baby in the cold. Pick of Jeffrey's meet and greet. We saw that mom. Uh, with her baby wrapped in a gigantic blanket with the meet and greet and kind of talked about if you were someone that was able to get a photo with Jeffrey at the meet and greet with that horizon backdrop, you were someone that waited for hours outside the store in the cold. So, I mean, having an infant with you like that for the purpose of keeping them outside to get a photo with Jeffrey Star. From what I saw in the comments below, um, it, it was frowned upon. It, um, a lot of you kind of said, well, this isn't something I would do. This isn't something. So, I mean, very, very minor point of discussion in terms of the, the episode that we just took a look at. But I don't know, kind of kind of seems like the whole community corner was saying, not something I would do, a little bit frowned upon, given a little bit of side eyes to that. It's like, I'm like, like, okay, yikes. All right. But anyway, um, lastly, to, to um, finish up Community Corner before we move on into Eugenia's Instagram story and then the live stream clips that we missed, um, I just noticed a recent influx of comments relating to just, you have found my channel, you really enjoy the content, you really enjoy my presence and what I have to say and everything. And I mean, words enough aren't able to express my gratitude and the way that I would like to come across as, you know, how gracious I am to those kind of comments and everything. I know that this time of a year is especially difficult for people with the holidays and family or lack thereof. And, you know, sometimes when people come online and they have someone that they listen to all the time. It's kind of like, hey, listen, you're a constant in my life. And I really appreciate that. When I started my channel, I come from like a part of YouTube called girl world, like the word girl, but if there's an O instead of an I, I come from a part of YouTube called girl world. And really a lot, <laughs> a lot of like what we do over there is like really silly and really just pointless, silly drama. And, um, laughs and giggles and um it, it, it's it's stupid a lot of the content is stupid so i have noticed like over the past six months as i have sort of to introduce eugenia to my channel and you know started to observe her story and discuss it more with a lot of you guys the tone and the objective of what i'm trying to communicate in my content has shifted a little bit whereas in the year you know in years past it has kind of just been let's laugh Let's giggle. Let's have a good time. It has now sort of changed into something entirely. And I noticed that I am bringing in a new group of people who are interested in different things and are interested in a different side of me. So I just cannot be, you know, any more gracious to say that, you know, I thank everybody who leaves all the comments and says, you know, like, oh, you know, I listen to you on my commute in the morning. I listen to you getting ready. You know, I'll do laundry and I'll throw on a video of yours. You know, you're really helping me get through something that I'm going through. Like, right. A lot of your advice is really hitting hard to home, hitting close to home. Sorry, not hard to home. Um, just seriously, thank you so much. Um, I, I seriously, I mean, I would, I would go through each individual comment of the thousands of comments that these videos receive in heart individual one of them. But I mean, seriously, I just want to come on here and give a 
general thank you to everyone who has said something very kind like that. I think that this is a topic and conversation that a lot of people are interested in. And for a long time, the concept of Eugenia Cooney's presence on the internet has just been very one note. Well, okay, we see this. We're frustrated about it. We're upset about it. Nothing gets done about it. We get more frustrated and more upset about it. Someone needs to do something. No one does anything. It, it, it's sort of like, you know, the, the same cycle of frustration and getting upset and futility. So I am just trying to implement a portion of discussion and a sort of different way of taking a look at it, whereas in the past, a lot of this in Eugenia's presence on the internet has just kind of been the same cycle of the same kind of rhetoric. So I appreciate you all so much. I appreciate anyone that writes a comment or shares their thoughts, you know, regardless of whether or not you agree with me. And honestly, if you don't agree with me, I appreciate that just as much, just because you bring a different type of discussion into Community Corner in a different way for me to think about things and, you know, switch up my viewpoint. Because I think that the best thing you can do in life is to realize that you, as a person, you're infallible. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have the wrong opinions about things. You're going to be wrong. You're going to be, so it's it's a journey. It's it's learning. So um, if people are interested and curious about this topic, and people are you know wanting to learn about it and everything, and I'm able to facilitate that learning, I mean that's incredible. I I never thought that this channel would have gone to anything that was just shits and gigs. Shits and gigs, really. I, I mean, so because honestly, how I started out YouTube and everything, it was just silliness. It, it's a lot of silliness. Like, if you go back and watch some of my really old videos, like, um, we'll argue about whether someone uh, lied about eating a can of Pringles. Like, just dumb crap like that. So... I know that as we tra like as I've transitioned into talking to someone, talking about someone like Eugenia Cooney, my attitude, my rhetoric, the way I come across, like it's all changed, and the channel itself has evolved in a way. So I just want to thank you all for coming in here and being a part of that change and a part of the reason why I'm able to have the platform that I do and we're able to talk about the things that we talk about. So thank you for all that. Enough of the sappiness. We're going to move on to the live stream clips that we missed, the filter fail, and then, I don't know, we do in the swag bag review. Maybe maybe we'll flip a coin. I don't know. Do I? I don't have a coin around here. Here, I have hand cream from Bath and Body Works. Can, can we flip that? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I was about to say nutrition label side down. Uh, we'll do it. Nutrition label side up. We won't do swag bag. <laughs> but then I'm thinking, this is hand cream. There's no nutrition label. <laughs> no! It was side up. We're not doing the swag bag. I'm sorry, everybody. The hand cream has spoken. <laughs> Which, by the way... Wouldn't mind me a little bit of hand cream right now. At Bath and Body Works... Um, they have this one scent. I mean, the scent of this one is called Chasing Fireflies. I really like it. It just smells like summertime. You know, just, oh, summer. Summertime. I love it. Chasing Fireflies. That's a fun little scent there. Which, by the way, this has nothing to do with, like, what we're talking about and everything. But I think uh, December 1st, they're doing that big candle sale. The Bath and Body Works thing. And this, is, by the way, like, not, not to, like, come across as, like, a shameless plug or whatever. But I do have a second channel. It's linked in the bio below called Oh Lordy More Jordy. And on there, I'll sort of, you know, do different reactions. Or I'll do vlogs of me talking in my car, talking about candles. Or what I recently purchased at Bath and Body Works. Like, things like that. So if you're interested in me talking about those kind of things, go ahead and check out that channel. But anyway... I think that Bath & Body Works is doing their big sale on December 1st. I think it's the 1st through the 3rd. You know that one big sale they do every year? Large three-wick candles for $9.99? It's coming up. Mark your calendar. I'm going. You going? I'm going. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to live stream clips we missed and the filter fail that is on everybody's mind. 
Okay, we have landed on over on YouTube Shorts. Now, I want to provide a little bit of context to this clip before we watch it. It's very quick. So what happens is Eugenia is on live with, um, I don't know, miscellaneous man in hat. And um, they're just ch talking, doing whatever. And Eugenia brings her hand to her mouth. And in that moment, this is what is being speculated as the filter fail. Whereas, you know, what we talked about earlier, some people will use filters that makes their hands or, you know, their skin more clear or their face more narrow or whatever. You know, the, why does anybody use the filter? So in this moment, it's very quick. So what is being speculated is as soon as Eugenia realizes that the filter is not picking up on her body, um, she turns it off and goes on pause mode, which takes off her screen for a second. So it is going to be very quick. If you miss it, we are going to move on to a screenshot of it. So don't worry, but it's going to be very quick. So keep your eyes peeled. It's Eugenia. What? Eugenia? <laughs> That's crazy. Aubrey with the follow. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. It's Eugenia. What? Eugene. So, I mean, I was able to get it paused here before she went on the, or sorry, I was able to pause it before she paused. I beat her to it. But this is sort of the screenshot that is um, going around the internet right now and people are discussing. I, I don't think that there's too much commentary for me to provide about it. It's sort of along the same lines as when she was in the arcade the other day and when she could be seen in the background of Jeffrey's arcade and I sort of paused the video and I sort of widened my eyes for a second. I don't, I don't know if the commentary goes much further than that. These are the kind of moments that have people's jaws dropping. These are the kind of moments that make people's, you know, hair on the back of their neck stand up. These are the kind of, heart in chest sinking kind of feeling heart in chest where else would it be <laughs> i don't know where i got that from but these are the kind of feelings and these are kind of the stills and these are kind of the screenshots on the internet that go around that make people see and go dear lord so this is sort of what is going on in the community right now um let's yeah, okay, she went at the pause. Let's take a one more look at it on the s screenshot side of it. Okay, so here is the still that a user on YouTube called Jadedness was able to get titled Eugenia Cootie without the filter on. Which, I mean, yeah, is concerning. Um, but this is kind of what is making its rounds. And um, this is from footage that I believe Wolfgang did not get. You know, Wolfgang's channel, how she's able to upload a lot of the clips and everything from Eugenia's uh, live streams like this. This this was not captured. So I don't know if this was uniquely independent to jadedness. And Jade was the one that was able to get this screenshot. But I did not see this on Wolfgang's page. I mean, in the clips that we're going to take a look at shortly, it might be on there. But this is the only place that I saw this. Um, so, yeah, this is from the other day when she was in that room with... Jeffrey and Hair by Jay. All right. So let's move on now to the live stream clips from Sunday. And you know what? I just realized I went out of order. <laughs> I was looking at my little like format on the, the note right here. And I was saying, okay, community corner, Instagram story, then live stream clips. And I went out of order a little bit. So, but um, there is not too much to take a look at here. This is a screenshot that Eugenia put on her Instagram story earlier today titled flying back today. So this is a shot out of her window, um, presumably flying from Wyoming back to Connecticut. And then she posted this photo up with someone that had their hands over their face. Um, I thought that this was a little bit strange. Like, it, it, if I was taking a photo with someone in public that I wanted to take a photo with that was popular on the internet, I wouldn't be covering my face up. I actually did go ahead and look at this this person's profile, Warren underscore K or whatever. Um, 
went to their profile and I think that, that that's like their thing. Like they don't show their face. It's like, um, like, you know how some people on, on social media, like don't show their face. It's like they, that um, where they wear a mask, like that's their thing. I don't know. It's not, it's not my thing, but some, some people don't like to show their face or whatever. So I guess that Warren here doesn't like to show his face, but he posted this on his Instagram story and then Eugenia posted it on hers titled, it was awesome meeting you. Um, only one little observation about this is that's what Eugenia's wearing. Where have we seen this before? Where have we seen these tights, these uh, these pantyhose with these tights? Not ripped pantyhose, just pantyhose. Where have we seen these before? With the cowboy boots. It's very faint because there is um, this little it was awesome meeting you over it. But she's wearing the exact same outfit that she was wearing in the video when someone got that footage of her and Deb when they originally flew home from Wyoming two weeks ago. Same cowboy boots, same tights, same big pink fringe looking jacket thing, same airport. I don't know, y'all. But I, I suppose the only thing that I will say about this is some of you have told me that have watched Eugenia a lot longer than me is Eugenia is someone who likes to wear the same thing over and over and over and over again. That what we can be expecting in the coming weeks from Eugenia is more Santa baby lingerie. You know that you know that video that we took a look at of her dancing to um, Mariah Carey when she was wearing that Santa baby lingerie outfit and the hat fell off of her head. We can be expecting that for probably the entirety of December and you know this one week week left of November that we have. So Santa baby lingerie is probably going to be a staple outfit that we will continue to see on here. Um, don't know why that is. I don't even know if that's commentary worth providing over. Maybe Eugenia just likes to wear the same thing um, day after day after day. But uh, I'm, I'm interested to see it because you guys have said in years past, around this time of year, she has worn some type of Christmassy outfit for pretty much every day of uploading throughout this time of year, like through December 25th and everything. So... I don't know. Is this the beginning of it? Like, is this her designated airport outfit? The cowboy boots, the tights, and the pink fringe looking thing? I don't know. But uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is an appetizer for what, what is to come in December through um, every day of seeing the Santa baby outfit. But, you know, I guess only time will tell. I would imagine now that she's home home. She is going to be live streaming a lot more. Um, I think that her account is unbanned right now. I mean, to me, that doesn't really mean anything because I could blink my eyes and she could be banned again. But I think that when Eugenia gets back Wednesday, November 22nd, today, she's unbanned. So I don't know if she'll continue to go live. I don't know if she'll get back into her swing of things in terms of streaming every night around 8 p.m. for hours on end like she has been doing. But we have not really been in the swing of things for a while now. So it'll be interesting to see how she is going to wrap up the end of November. Okay, so we are over to the clips that we missed. Um, she, at this point, is still accompanied by her lovely friend Eric with the colorful language, so expect some F-bombs in the coming clips. Oh, it's like, it's so weird. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, man. Mm, let's go on TikTok and fucking be mean because we hate our lives. You know what? I think it's people, it's people that, like, they either hate their husbands, they hate their wives, or they're just... Overall, they hate their fucking lives. So they get on TikTok to try and make other people. Amanda! Let's go. Two more for 700. That's right, Eric. You know, they were like. Okay, so what what category do you fall into? Because remember, in Eugenia's mind and a lot of her friends' minds, we're all haters. Everything that goes on in this, this is a hate channel, right? So uh, what what category do you fall into? Do you, Okay, so let me know in the comments. Do you, do you hate your husband? Do you hate your wife? Or do you hate your own effing life? Oh, hey, that rhymed. Who knew Eric was such a poet? <laughs> we got Dr. Seuss up in here. 
really happy with their lives. Mm-hmm. Like they probably would to just kind of be going on TikTok all day and you know, just yeah. kind of, like being mean to people all the time, you know? Like, <laughs> what's the point of that? It's crazy. They get off on it and it's fucking it's so weird. It's so weird. Yeah, it's like Hopefully one day they just kind of find like better things to do and they won't, they won't ever, they're miserable, you know, Joe, oh my God, why do you go live with Jeffrey? Why do you go live with Eugenia? I'm like, fuck dude, maybe there's a reason Jeffrey doesn't want to go live with you, weirdo. Yeah, it's like, why is this like, oh, it's like, oh, weird. <laughs> okay, so some great insight from our friend Eric here. Oh, you know, guys, actually, I'm just like, I'm just kind of living like in Wyoming, you know? <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you know. So it's like, yeah. I think that we watched this one already. Oh, maybe never. Like, <laughs> how many kids will I be having? Oh, like h- hundreds of kids, you know? Just, they're all in the way. I guess that that's not how you guys all are like, Oh, she's pregnant. Oh, so you got a battle request. So people, we've talked about this. There are a group of people that come on Eugenia's uh, live streams and say a lot of things that they shouldn't say. A lot of nasty, mean things um, that I don't believe are beneficial really to anyone but hey why does anybody troll on the internet why does anyone go on the internet and say horrible things so i mean that's really a discussion for another day but the thing is about this is um as it relates to people in the whole grouping thing so if you're going in there and you're asking eugenia like oh hey are you pregnant or saying something along the lines of that um People people that actually have something worthwhile to say will get responded to the same way. Because I think for Eugenia, it's a lot easier to lump everyone together and call everyone a hater than it is to differentiate between what people are saying. Because if you can group everybody together, everybody is a hater, everybody's nasty, everybody's negative. But I mean, if you were to differentiate what I have to say versus someone in her chat asking if she's pregnant... Um, I think that responding to what I have to say or what a lot of you in the comments have to say is wildly different and would take a lot more thought and would take more of a, uh, I don't know, more thought out response to it. And that's just not something that she's interested in doing because I think that what a lot of us in the com like a lot of what is said in the comments and a lot of like what I propose on here, I think are very good rational statements that um she doesn't have answers to so uh, i think i don't know i I hope that this doesn't come across as like arrogant or anything like that but i think that what some people on the internet and what i say on here and what you guys say in the comments and everything we make very good points that she would not be able to counter or jeffrey would not be able to counter um i think that we would win a lot of the arguments or a lot of the talking points that uh, relate to this concept as a whole. But, you know, because of that and because she doesn't really want to address certain things, it's just, well, oh, ugh, haters, nasty, evil. I'm good. How are you? We're doing amazing, amazing. You're doing amazing. Where are, where are you? So I'm actually, I'm actually in Wyoming right now. Oh, are you? Are you at Jeffrey's house? Yeah. Oh, it's that's what's so up. Are you, very nice. Okay. Are y'all, are y'all having a party over there or what? Here. So I've been having such a good time. You're a party? Because I've seen uh, a lot of people are like some for a, for yeah. a birthday party. Is that what that is? Launch party yesterday for his Scorpio collection, and it was amazing. It was so good to see him, like you know, having so many people showing up, getting so much love, and the collection looks so beautiful. So I'm so happy for him with everything. It's been amazing. Have you have you got to try it yet? I'm good. How are you? Oh, we're doing a it's like. I don't know what's going on. That's not reflective. I'm, I'm at it. Okay. You couldn't hear anything? 
Oh, sorry, everybody. Um, don't do what? Oh, nothing, guys. Just like, you know, just, just nothing. Just, yeah. Um, someone's trying to hack me. I don't think so. I don't think it's that. Now we can hear you. Okay, that's good. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Um, so yeah, everyone. Much better? Yeah. No, for now we're we're good, I think. Um Oh, Anna and Callie, thank you so much. When am I going back home? When are you guys going back home? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So just uh just some silly talk. You know, I, I I can't imagine why that might be. Why why something in this very moment would be coming out of Eugenia's mouth that doesn't make any sense. Um, plants have been watered, and now she is kind of uttering nonsense, and Jeffrey is laughing along with her. Uh, I I don't know how the two relate. I I really don't. Yeah, what are you guys leaving? Yeah, like, what are you leaving home? Yeah, like. We all, everyone back at my house in Connecticut, like, when are you guys leaving? It does make sense. What do you mean it makes no sense? It makes perfect sense, you guys. What are you talking about? Right, <laughs> Where's Jeffrey? Oh my gosh, guys, Jeffrey's amazing. He's here, like, you know, getting his makeup done. He's looking so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jeffrey? Her response, Jeffrey's amazing. <laughs> gosh oh eugenia what's what's the square root of 241 jeffrey's new palette is amazing <laughs> oh my but yeah but just only, i only want to put him like on the camera when he wants to be on i wouldn't want to like you know just be like every second like hey jeffrey be on camera again you know <laughs> so only when he wants to ever um, are my eyes dry? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jeffrey. I think you feel pretty lubricated. You know, like, guys, Jeffrey showed me like this super cool like eye drop thing. And I'm like, now you guys can't tell me my eyes look red. They actually work so good. I'm like, I could have put every, all, everyone back in my house. I mean, they kind of did. When she like got real close to the camera like that, they kind of did look real red. The thing that I don't like about shorts on here is, like, if I wanted to go to, like, right here, for example, in the short, I can't just fast forward to it. I have to let the whole thing play through again. Oh, whatever. I guess if you were watching the screen, you saw what I saw, right? Oh, it's making the stream lag. Oh, that's so annoying. I'm so sorry, guys. Frozen. That's so bizarre. Yeah, there's no draw yet. Rich, how are you? Rich, thank you so much for the heartbeat. Oh, Rich, how are you doing today? Oh, just having some crazy moments in this stream. I don't even know like what's going on right now, guys, with that, but yeah, that's so weird. Why does it freeze? Um, at this point, I don't really know why it's like how that's happening, but um, it's very weird. Very strange. When is Thanksgiving? I think on Thursday, right? It's crazy. I can't believe it. It's TikTok. It's not. It's what's well, making the stream. Go oh, and meet up. Um, uh, yes, we're gonna go meet up with Shauna, you guys. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So, um. Oh, Shauna. Shauna was the woman that was yelling at her kids in the living room was saying like oh come tell tiktok good night before you go to bed remember and then she went to the arcade yes that was her name shauna i put shauna in the thumbnail of the last video shauna all right well i think that this is the uh the end here i think i'm actually gonna end the live for now um thank you guys who came in and who were nice i'm so happy i can finally go live again because my account has been kind of like going through it if you know what i mean but I'm so happy I'm back.
feedback and um you know i've been having so much fun with jeffrey and like the amazing people that are here guys like they are the best ever and i'm so thankful to just like be here and get to be here for scorpio launch and yeah and, and jeffrey is the best ever so all right guys i'll talk to you guys later we're gonna go and hang out with shauna <laughs> I just, I just think it's funny as she is concluding her live stream, her, her send off, her, okay, I'll see you next, next time guys and everything. All right. Um, thanks for everybody who came into the chat and was kind. Thank you for everyone who came in here and spent time. Thank you for everyone who sent in a gift. Um, Jeffrey's amazing. Uh, I, I think you, you guys were, <laughs> it's like, that was a part of the send off. <laughs> it's like if she was going down a bullet list in her head it's like okay thank you for everyone being kind thank you for everyone that sent a gift make sure that everyone knows jeffrey's amazing <laughs> and all right bye everybody oh boy okay y'all well i think that that concludes sunday's live stream so we have covered pretty much everything that there is to cover from sunday's live stream did Community Corner, did the Instagram story. Yep, so we are caught up in real time, everybody. So I suppose the next time that we will um, be taking a look at anything, it will be um, some type of new footage. And I'm sure that she will be on the pink couch ready to tell us everything about uh, what we didn't see or maybe what we already did see um, that went on in LA and Wyoming this past week. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and I'll see you soon.